Hello everyone, I'm Paul and welcome to Gelin Outdoors. This is part two of two for the installation of my electric winch onto my utility dump logging trailer. The next part of this installation is to do the wiring on my ATV that I have here in front of me. So to begin with that, what I'm going to start with is the rocker switch. I've got the rocker switch right here. It has a handlebar mount. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to mount it right up here in a tight spot. I don't have much room, but it should fit in here. So I'm going to put it in there. I was going to hang it loose for now. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take the wiring. It's a long cable and I'm going to pass it down through the handlebars here and I'm going to pass it to the other side. So let's get that in here. A little bit of a room so I can push it down inside. And then I'm going to go underneath here and I'm going to grab it with my hand and I'm going to pull the, the wire down to find where it is. So all I want, I want to do is get it to the other side. So it's going to feed the wire all the way down. You'll see it coming through. As I mentioned, it's a pretty long wire, so it'll take a minute. So that wire is on. I've got it started to go on the other side. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tighten this up here. So it's just an Allen bolt with a lock nut and a washer lock washer and a flat washer. So I'm going to put it in from the other side here. I'm actually going to put the washer and the nut down for now until I get the bolt through. I'm going to try and feed it. Hopefully you can see what I'm doing. There's the bolt. And then I'm going to put the washers. Start with a flat washer. My hand will get in the way a few times here. And then I'm going to put the lock washer, and then I'm going to put the nylock nut, and try and get that started. Okay, I've got it on there now. I'm going to turn it just up a little bit to the position where I want it, and I'm going to put an 8 millimeter wrench on it. If I can get it on that. And then from the other side, I'm going to use an Allen key and I'm going to tighten it up. Hopefully my head's not getting too much in the way. Okay, I'm just going to tighten just a bit more on the bottom so it doesn't sway. Now you don't want over tighten this because it could quite easily break or put too much pressure down below. It has the ability to move around like this. I'll finish tightening it later. So the cable has gone, the wiring has gone through to the other side. I'm going to go to the other side and I'm going to grab the wire. You can see down here where the wires come through. I'm going to pull it through. And you see here, there's a red wire. This red wire is for key switch ignition. So when I turn the four wheeler on, it will power the wire to use it on the rocker switch. So what I need to do is get a source of power. What I've done is I have on this side here, on the other side, I have this one wire. I'm gonna turn my flashlight on. And you can see there's two wires coming in here. It's coming from the same side I was just a minute ago. I'm going to pull that brown wire off. That brown wire and the black and yellow wire go up to a 12 volt outlet on the other side. And it has a fuse on this side, so I'm going to use that as my power source. I've got a wire tester here. Down below here, you can see I've got it on the grounded on the frame of the four wheeler. And I'm going to put my tester just up inside here. I'm going to plug it in. Now I'm going to turn the ignition on my four wheeler. I'm going to come up here. You can see I'll turn it to the on position. And I should have power. 
you can see here I've got power, the light, so that tells me I have a 12 volt source here. So I'm going to use this here wire to tap in my rocker switch with. So I'm going to turn off my power. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to remove the seat. From the ATV and I'm just going to put it aside and then I'm going to disconnect the battery terminal on the negative side so that I can go ahead and do my wiring without any issues so now that my negatives I'm just going to tuck it down here my negatives disconnected I'm just going to put the bolt back here so I don't lose it and now I'm going to connect the wire down below here I'm just using one of these guys here. A lot of you guys don't like these things, but this is what it came with, so this is what I'm going to use. And I'm just going to take this red wire and I'm going to pass it through on one side here. And I'm going to get up to that brown wire. Oop. It's kind of hard to see to do as well. I'm just going to get my flashlight up in here a little bit better. So I got my flashlight there. I'm just going to grab a pair of pliers. I don't have much room in here to get my hands, but I just want to get that wire inside. This is the most difficult part of the installation, I would say. Okay, there we go, it's starting to go in. Okay, now I've got my... Just about in there. There we go, you heard that click. So it's in there now. And I'm just going to push my red wire up just a touch. And then I'm going to clamp it down here. It's got to move the black and yellow wire out of the way first. I'm going to fold it over. There we go. Okay, I'm going to clamp it down here. It's going to make sure my red wire is tucked up nicely. Okay. And then we pinch it down so that it makes contact for both wires. Okay, you crimp that down nice and tight. And now you can see it's down there, and you just got to fold this over to close it up. It's going to pinch it with the pliers as well. There we go. So I'm going to come back later on, and I'm going to tape around there. But for now, I'm not going to. So the next thing to do is I just have to reconnect my 12-volt source here. My hands are going to get in the way here, but I can't help that because it's really hard to move in here. There's not much room. Okay, so we're all reconnected as you can see here. Now I'm going to take my line and I'm going to feed it through on the bottom here underneath the unit and if you come around this way. So we'll bring the wire up underneath the side guard here and tuck it and I'm going to bring it to the back and now I'm going to do is I'm going to bring it up underneath the fender into the area over here hole back here I can feed it through just grab it with my hand here and I'm going to feed it up and through so that brings us to this point here now the next thing to do is the uh, solenoid some people call it a contactor anyways we're going to put this down in this area here I had removed my toolbox so I can mount it in there it's going to take the drill and I'm going to insert it here and I'm going to drill a hole so I've got the hole there now first thing I'm going to do is I can't use the drill on the bottom because I can't get in there so I'm just going to put a bolt here on the top to start I'm just going to remove this piece here Hole's a bit tight, but it should work. So 
kind of tighten it in a little. Now I don't want to put it too tight. What I'm going to do is I'm going to line up on this side here. It's going to remove this piece here as well. I'm going to drill another hole. I want to make sure it's there. I've got it started. It's going to ream it a little bit bigger. And the next thing I'm going to do so I'm just going to leave it like this. I'm not going to bolt it on now. Uh, what I want to do is I want to put the, the next uh, set of wires on and it's going to connect here to the solenoid. This cable here, I made this cable up myself this morning and the reason why I made this cable up is because when I had all the cables for the winch, if I was mounting the winch to the ATV, but since I mounted the winch onto the trailer, I need one extra cable. So I made this up myself this morning. So anyways, I'm going to bring it up through the same hole. This is going to, this cable here is going to run to the solenoid and then it's going to connect to the trailer end. So I'm going to bring it up here through the same hole. Got one of them through, the other one's a little harder to find. There we go. If you notice, it's yellow and blue, so I coded it correctly to line up with the right connection on the solenoid. You can see yellow, red, blue, and black. So this is why I left it loose as well, so I can connect all my wires before I go any further. So I'm going to connect the yellow on here. And I'm not going to tighten anything really tight until later. So I'm going to put the yellow here, we'll put the uh, flat washer, then the lock washer. And the reason why I'm installing it up here underneath the seat is because I have a winch on the front of this ATV and where I wanted to install this solenoid contactor was where it, the other one is, so I can't do that. And the other one I need to connect to is here, the blue. So I'll just take this off here and we'll get the blue wire on there so we'll put the blue one here and then again once again flat washer lock washer and then the nut itself I'll just tighten it just a touch not, not snug or anything, just so the nuts don't back off too much. So the next thing I want to do is I want to install the ends of the cable for my rocker switch. Here we have a green wire and a black wire, very nicely laid out here. We'll just connect green to green. Might have to move the boot down. Okay. Or I guess we're going to be going. Green will always help. I thought I had the black. I thought I had. I thought I had the green wire already. My hat was the black one. So we'll just put the protective cover over top, and then the black wire to the black wire here. So now the rocker switch is connected. We'll put the little protective boot over top. I'll actually come back and tape these things later. I prefer to have tape and not just a little piece of plastic over top. So the next thing to do is to connect our power source from the battery. And we're going to use these two cables. So what I want to do is I want to pass my red cable through here. I'm going to take the boot off. I'm just going to pass it underneath here and I can pull it up and through. That's going to go back to the contactor at the other end. Positive will go there. And the black wire is here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass it through as well. I'm going to remove the boot for now. And then I'm going to pass it underneath from this side. I'm going to need my flashlight here. I'm getting dark in here. So 
I'm just going to put my flashlight here so I can see down in here. If you can see down in this hole here, I should find my wire if I pass it through properly. Oh, it's kind of tight in there, but there we go. I just got it there. I don't know if you could see that on camera, but it's coming through there. Got the little eye, eye piece there. I'm just going to grab it and try to pull it through. There we go. So it's coming through. Now I'm just going to connect the positive and the negative to the solenoid first. Again, it's color coded. So I'm going to put these actually boots back here on before I do that for so I don't forget. Actually, I need to leave them off because of the, uh, the bolts. Anyways, what we're going to do here is put the red on. Let's put the nut here somewhere. I don't, hopefully I won't lose it. So I'm going to pass the wire down here. Actually, I think I should come up from the bottom, might be better. A little tighter, but it's going to work out better on the long run, I think. So I got the red there. I'm going to put the washers and the nut back on. And then I'll pull the boot up a little ways, and I'll just leave it there. It's going to tighten that just a little bit. Don't want to tighten it completely because I still have to have it loose enough to get the bolt to mount this thing in. And the negative wire, I'm going to bring it around and it goes right here. Take that all off. And the black wire, I'm just going to put on here now. I'm going to bring it from the top and then I'm going to put the washer and the nut back on. There's my washers. I'll take the nut and I'll just tighten it just a little bit, not too tight. So the next thing I'm going to do is it's going to finish mounting this, the solenoid. It's going to take a bolt. Okay guys, I'm going to try and get this bolt in here. It's a little bit of a trouble spot. It's uh, pretty snug. Not enough room in here to really get my hand. And I don't know if you can get a good view on the camera. I can't even get my hand to get the washers on. So I'll try and pick it up. Okay guys, I uh, had to turn the camera off and back on. I uh, had struggled to get in here, so what I've done is I had to remove this plug, this connector here. And now I should be able to get in here to mount my bolt. So, the lighting is not the best here. Okay, I've got the bolt going through. I'm going to try and get the washers on now. It's a pretty tight fit in here. Got one of the washers. It's the plastic that's causing a bit of an issue here. So what I'm going to do is try and get that in there. It's going to try and hold it and hopefully it's going to catch. It's an awfully tight spot. I think I did get it. Okay, I got to get a wrench on that. So just tighten that up. Nice and snug. Okay, and we'll do the same thing on the other side. I'll move the boot. I've got a washer and a nut for it. Put the washer. And we'll get a lock washer as well. Okay, we'll put the lock washer and then a nut. 
put that the right way. Hopefully you can see in here. And we'll tighten this up on this side. And then we're going to adjust the wires in a minute. Okay, so that's all nice and snug. It's not going to go anywhere. It has four holes to go, but I don't... It's tight enough in there. It's not going to move, so... I'll have to put this uh, piece back here first. We'll remove this here. Mount this back on so I don't forget. And we'll do the same thing here. We'll reconnect this one. Make sure I get it the right way. Oh, that's a really hard connection to make. Okay, we reconnected that. We'll put it back. Okay guys, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pass the wires to where I want. Just through here to get up to the battery. I'll tuck the little extra wire down that way. Same thing for the negative. I'll just run it through a path here. Pull it up. We won't connect it yet. Uh, just until I get all the wires here where I want them. Put these here in the back. Let's tuck those all away. Let's make sure everything down here is tight. Actually, use an open wrench might be a little easier to get at it. Just tighten everything up nice and snug. Okay guys, the next thing to do is to connect the battery wires to the battery itself. I'm going to go off camera to do that because this type of battery is a little hard to, to uh, connect. You can see here there's a little block inside. If I just twirl this a little bit. There's a little block inside there that I actually have to move forward. You can see in there it floats around. So it's a lot of messing around to do. So I'm going to go off camera and we'll be right back. All right, guys, you can see here I've uh, got the terminals connected. Um, the terminals were very difficult to connect because of the design of it. So that's why I did it off camera. And you can see in here it's all cleaned up. It's all the wires have been rooted to where I want it. Uh, now the only thing is down here I've got the positive. I want to get a boot for that. I don't have a boot right now to put on that. But I'm going to find a boot and I'm going to cover that up. Uh, so that's the only thing I ha have left to do in here. So the next thing to do is to put the quick connect. If you look down here underneath the four-wheeler, this is where the wire that I made that's connected to the solenoid, it comes here. And what I want to do is I want to connect it to the trailer wire. So in order to do that, what I did is I purchased a quick connect. You can see here I've marked it yellow and blue for positive. Yellow is positive and blue is negative so that I can connect these cables accordingly, yellow and blue. Now the one thing about these quick connects, you can see here, and I don't know if you can see on camera or not, but there's kind of a hump here. And on the other side, it has like a little uh, groove in there where it kind of will clip on and it will kind of lock in. So what you want to do is with these things here is that the side with the hump, the side here with the hump is going to go to the top and you're going to insert that in until it clicks. Uh, the only thing is going to make sure that you got it color code it to uh, what you want it to be. So here in this case I have the yellow and I'm going into yellow. So I should be able to just push it in until it clicks. Just got to get it flat. There you can see it, it's in there now but it hasn't clicked yet so I just got to push it up a little bit further. There it clicked in there so I can't now I can't pull it out. Same thing with the blue, same thing again, you're going to have the top where the hump side is 
and I'm just going to slide it inside. The hump goes to the top, to the rounded part. I'm going to push it in, and you heard it click there, so that's connected. So that's the ATV side. Now I want to do the same thing for the other side, and that's for the trailer. Just got to refeed this in here. So I'm going to take the same thing, same process. I'm going to make sure I have the blue one. And it's going to be the hump side again. I'm going to make sure I got, have the hump side. I'm going to push it towards the top. And I'm going to click it in, the blue to blue. And it's a little hard to click, but okay, that, that one's almost it. And then I'm going to take the yellow. You can see the yellow wire. Same thing, I'm going to put the hump towards the top. And I'm going to click that in there. And you shouldn't be able to pull them back out. So the next thing to do is, this one has a handle. You can put the handle on either one of these. It doesn't matter which side you put the handle on. I haven't really decided. I'm just going to put one on. I'm just going to put the handle on this side for now, just to try it out. So the handle just sits on the top and there's two bolts. I'm going to pass the bolt through. And the second bolt. And this is just to help to take this thing off a little easier. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip it up. And you can see here there's a little kind of an octagon. And that's where the, the nut will sit inside in the lock so that you can tighten it up. I'll spin the first one on and the second one. Try to get it on as well without cross-threading it. There we go. And then just use a screwdriver. You can tighten it up. And you can see this one here is seated down in, into the octagon. And do the same thing for the other one. We'll just tighten it up. And then there's these rubber uh, pieces that go on the end, end caps. And we just can put it on like this here so it stays on. And the end cap will just go over top when you're not using it. And the same thing, we'll do the same thing for the ATV side. We'll put the loop over and then we can put the end cap the same way. Next step to do is to connect these together to have the power going to the winch on the trailer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to hitch up the trailer to the ATV and I'm going to take it all outside and then we can put this together and you can see the winch in action. Okay, I got the trailer and the ATV outside. Let's do just a quick demo on the winch. I'm going to hit the rocker switch here. I'm going to have it come up. Okay guys, so uh, that's basically it for today. I'm just gonna, I bought this little cover that I'm gonna put on top of the winch. You can see here, it's an actual champion cover. Take a closer look. So that'll basically be it for today. I really appreciate you watching. Um, if you have not subscribed already, please do so by hitting that subscribe button down below. Once again, thank you for watching Jelen Outdoors. And just before I go, I've got just a little bonus addition. As I mentioned earlier in the first video that I had a coincidental story to tell you, I will take a couple minutes here now and I'll bring my ATV back in the, to storage and I will tell you my story. 
All right, guys, I know the video has ran long, but I wanted to tell you my coincidental story. And that is about six months ago, I purchased a generator from Champion. And within the packaging came this little pamphlet, and it's a free t-shirt offer. In order to get the free t-shirt, you need to create a video, post it on YouTube, and let Champion know that you've done that. So I thought to myself, what a great way to start a YouTube channel. So it took me a little while to get the video all put together and post it on YouTube. After that, I came back to this pamphlet and I started reading a little bit further down. And what it said down lower is to get a t-shirt as well. Another option is just rate and review it on their website. I said, well, I could have saved myself a lot of time. So long story short, I went onto the website and did a rate and review and I left it at that. And I was expecting my t-shirt. A couple months go by and I didn't hear anything. And then a little bit more time went by and then I got a reminder from Champion saying that I purchased a product, would I like to do a review on it? And I said to myself, well, I've done that already. So what I did is I went onto the Champion site and I took a look and Lo and behold, what it said is that after you finish the rate and review, or if you're using a video on YouTube, is that you have to fill out the request information for the actual t-shirt. So that's what I did. I went in there and I entered my information, such as my address, where to deliver to, and the size of the shirt that I wanted. So it said about five to 10 business days to before I would receive the uh, shirt. So anyways, so once again, a long story short, I went and purchased the ATV winch that you've seen me install in the last two videos here. And with that also came a pamphlet. As I was doing the installation on the ATV winch, the mail person that comes to deliver the mail here dropped the package off. And lo and behold, this is the package here. And the coincidence is that it's the actual Champion t-shirt that I ordered. I'll show you here, I've got it upside down. So I thought it was kind of neat and very coincidental that the very first YouTube video that I created was about my Champion generator and that the very first day that this long overdue t-shirt comes to me is when I'm doing an install on a Champion product, in specific, the ATV winch. Anyways, guys, that's my coincidental story, so hopefully uh, you like that. Um, apologize for having the video so long. Once again, thank you for watching Gelin Outdoors, and uh, if you have not subscribed already, please do so. Share with a friend, and once again, thank you for watching Gelin Outdoors. We'll see you next time.